So before I start this tutorial about shopping for girls clothes, uh, I'll address the elephant in the room. I don't really use Microsoft Edge and I wouldn't recommend it to people, but I won't switch to Chrome either. <laughs> uh, basically I'm using Edge because I've never used it. That means nothing will come up and reveal my secrets or whatever. So this is a audio purely designed to teach you how to shop for girls clothes. This is intended for trans women that have never been exposed to what outfits are even called. <laughs> I'll go over what different types of skirts are called, tops, that kind of thing. Little suggestions here and there, how to actually find them, pick sizing, that kind of thing. So, uh, here we go. So, um, uh, they're suggesting, um, Really random stuff, actually. AI yearbook photos? That's a thing. Okay, well, there you go. So, naturally, you might think, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll search skirt, right? But when you search skirt, right, there's so many options. It can actually be overwhelming, in fact. So, what we're going to focus on first is types of skirts, basically. You may be most familiar with this type of skirt. I think this one's the most popular with trans people. Um, and the reason for that is skirts like these kind of gather at the waist and spread out. So it gives the illusion of hips, even when you don't have hips quite yet. So these are often called A-line skirts. A-line is just referring to the shape, <laughs> just the way it flares outwards. To get more specific, you can also write A-line flared skirt. That'll get you something a bit closer. And you can get stuff like this. That said, you should probably not use Shein. <laughs> the clothes are really cheap, but uh, they're not really made by good people. <laughs> um. To be honest, uh, I think the embodiment of fashion is someone will tell you to not shop at Shein and then you find out they shop at Shein anyway because they, you know, sell stuff for so cheap. So that's your decision to decide, especially when starting out. It can be very cost effective. <laughs> However, shopping at eBay or something is just fine. Um, I'm from Australia, so I'm going to get suggested at shops from Australia. I'm going to focus less on like the shops to go to and more like finding the styles themselves, if that makes sense. <laughs> this is very much like a absolute basics, you know? <laughs> so, um, I'm kind of nervous that like the <laughs> OBS capture is not working. So I've, I've been checking in back and forth. I really hope this works. If not, well, that's going to be awkward, huh? So you can also get, the hi you can also call it a high waist skirt. Uh, you want it high waisted, especially if you're early in your transition journey, because it will really accentuate the hips that you may not have, but it'll look like you have. So we'll go through different types of skirts. Um, skater skirt is another catch-all term for <laughs> the pleated A-line skirts. I usually like writing skater skirt because you usually get something closer to this. And like, I, I think that's just a cool look in general. And that top's really cute too, actually. <laughs> um, do they have the top? No, okay. I'll, I'll go look for it later. So, other things you can do is usually the word pleated can also get you similar results. All these don't really mean different things. They just describe different parts of the skirt. <laughs> so we've achieved something so specific that, you know, realistically, <laughs> you only need to type some of these. <laughs> so let's show you a different type of skirt. 
Uh, these are called maxi skirts. They usually drape down a bit more. They're like the really long flowy ones. Um, these aren't my look personally, but some people can really rock it and um, make it really work. It's a really cool look if you think it's your vibe. Um, I don't have much experience of buying them. <laughs> um, but from my understanding, they're a bit reliant on figure. So how it will look will depend. But if you want to give it a go, you should give it a go. 100%. Because I think that's good for you to try. Um, we have wrap skirts here. They're pretty similar, except uh, they have a little they have a little spot for the leg to poke out. Um, they're really good looks too. You'll sometimes see them in like you know like really like <laughs> hanging out in summer kind of vibe, <laughs> you know. You usually see them in floral patterns, <laughs> generally. So, um, what other type of skirt would you probably want to know? Um, it's not my thing, but denim skirts are, you know, they're popular. Uh, denim, denim just refers to that kind of material that looks like, like, jeans. <laughs> and, uh, oh, Shein again. See what I mean? It's always Shein. It never, it never goes away. <laughs> and they want me to sign up to all these coupons. I feel like I'm un unintentionally endorsing them. I don't want to do that. <laughs> In case people are wondering, um, I get most of my clothes from H&M, <laughs> which, you know, no company's perfect, but I think they're fine. <laughs> they're really good for getting cute tops and stuff. I don't know if H&M is a international store or not. H&M store, um, international why is it doing bing now <laughs> see how much i don't use edge um is it a global business um it's wikipedia yes is it multinational clothing company oh it's based in sweden well now you know um that that's where I get 99% of my clothes. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> um, but honestly, I recommend uh, looking up, like, maybe your local shopping center and seeing what clothes they have available. Chances are, if you're watching this, though, you're not in a position to be able to just walk in. And I understand that. It took me ages to do that. All you can do instead is simply go on the website of the stories that are near you. You can try all of them. <laughs> um, oh, what's the word for it? There's um, these really cool punk skirts that have like a, like this type of pattern on it that you see a lot. I'll, I'll just write, this is us improvising. This is a test. Um, yeah, you know, like the ones that have like these kind of patterns. Oh, what are those called? I've forgotten. I'm going to remember the second I stop recording. And, like, I'm going to just be so confused why I forgot. <laughs> um, and she in approaches again. Uh, elastic. If a skirt's listed as elastic. Um, so, like, elastic skirt. <laughs> if it's an elastic skirt, that means that and by the way, most, pretty much all of the A-line pleated skirts are elastic. It means that it's a lot easier to fit in with sizing. As it kind of wraps around you and hugs itself in. So you don't need like as big of a sizing as you would for other stuff. Why is that skirt cute? <laughs> oh. that's, that's, that's cute. I'm conflicted. See, this always happens. Why do, why do they have the good stuff? It's uh, probably why they're so popular. Anyway, uh, that is uh, my skirt crash course. And now we're going to move on to other types of clothes. 
Um, and it's okay if this is a lot of information so far. As long as you're having a good time and you find one or two things that you can take away from today. So, you might want something under your skirt. Leggings. Leggings is just a catch-all term for these kind of things. Like, you're not... They can be worn as pants, and honestly, a lot of people do. Um, but as trans women, it's a bit difficult for us to do that due to circumstances. But they are amazing to wear under your skirts, especially if it's colder where you are. We just finished winter in Australia when I'm recording this. Um, which, in case you're curious, I'm recording this on the 1st of October. <laughs> I wonder how long I'll be before you see it. <laughs> Probably a while knowing me. <laughs> um, so, uh, leggings are great when it's a bit colder and you still want to wear like feminine clothing, but when it's cold. Um, basically, what makes leggings different from stockings is that leggings finish um, at the, the ankles and they don't cover your whole feet. <laughs> Whereas stockings usually like cover your entire like leg. Or not your entire leg. In the case of a thigh height, it's technically stockings. I think they are. Anyway, stockings go the whole way down the body. Right to the tippy toes. Um, am I allowed to show this kind of stuff on YouTube? <laughs> I have no idea. So let's move on really quickly. Um... Let's, let's cover jeans next. So we know jeans, they're like pants, but kind of tight and kind of hard to wear. I don't <laughs> really wear them ever. <laughs> um, but if you want some really girly looking jeans, um, try typing high-waisted jeans. This is the same trick we used for um, the skirts as we can kind of hide our figure a little. <clears throat> and that's not a bad thing. I think if you're hiding features to more accentuate other features, that's not a bad thing. It's about, you know, feeling comfortable in your own body and you deserve to wear whatever you want, you know? I don't view it as concealment or whatever. We always wear outfits that look more flattering on us and you get to pick what that is. <laughs> you can wear whatever you like. Sometimes, like, the high-waisted won't go all the way to your legs. And that's okay, by the way. It can actually look really cute with that look. So, that's kind of my jean suggestion. They also have, like, those ripped ones. They're so popular. <laughs> um, like, I feel like in the early 2000s, when I was really little, uh, ripped jeans were, like, pretty popular. And then they kind of went out of style for a little bit. And then they just kind of came back suddenly. Maybe I wasn't observant. I don't know. <laughs> so, how are you feeling so far? Feeling good? Good, cool. So, let's move on to our next clothing item. <laughs> so, if you want a catch-all term for something you wear... A woman's top. Just a catch-all term for something you wear at the higher part of your body. <laughs> and from here you can learn all the vocab. Um, so this one here. Um, I've never used Etsy. I don't know how good Etsy is and it's, I don't feel very hopeful. I said that really poorly. Anyway, I'm not very hopeful for Etsy. <laughs> Um, but this is kind of what a blouse looks like. These are really nice because they pair well with jeans. They have a little part that flares out and can like kind of conceal some features that we would rather not mention. Um, the flowy arm parts are really good for framing the arms. And they don't emphasize shoulders too much. So I'd say like stuff like this, like the button up. Um, cotton stretch shirts. Um, usually the word fitted will mean it's a bit tighter. This would be very hard to get your size in because 
if it's fitted, it's really strict. And doing that online is very difficult. Um, if you are doing that online, try ordering one size higher than you think you are, because online sizing is really weird. <laughs> um, let's have a look at, oh, I should have some water. <laughs> yeah, because I'm recording this for OBS, I gotta do this in one take. To avoid <coughs> lots of editing. Because <laughs> I feel like this video being more low key will probably <coughs> be a benefit, maybe. I really want it to give like the really trying to help you out very casually vibe. So, uh, we have, we have crop tops. Now, the part that is cropped can be different. <laughs> um... Sometimes they crop the bottom part to show a little more tummy. Uh, sometimes they crop the bottom part and a little bit of the top part. Sometimes they crop it up and it's like gathered at the front. Usually that's like referred to as gathered top. Um, and uh, that's usually like the variation that you see. Um, I, I forgot the... I forgot the punctuation. My bad. Sorry, Google. So let's now show you. Now, chances are, if you're like me when I started out, <laughs> I was kind of petrified to show my shoulders. However, I do want to encourage you to give an off-shoulder to top a go. I keep saying top incorrectly. <laughs> It's actually really hard to say. So the good thing about off the shoulder ones, right? Is the sizing is so forgiving. You can just buy one of these and it'll probably work. <laughs> they, they usually kind of fit everyone. I'm a really big fan of them <laughs> and they're really cute. And they're very obviously femme looking. So, when you wear it, it'll be very obvious you're going for a very fun look. Some of them are a bit more simple, they'll be like a little off the, t off the shoulder, just on one shoulder, or sometimes they'll be both shoulders. Lots of options. <laughs> I'm more of a fan of like, um, off both shoulders, because I think like, showing off collarbones are like, really beautiful. Um, I used to be really dysphoric about my collarbones being really prominent. And then I found out <laughs> basically every person they pick to be a model has really pronounced collarbones because what I didn't know was it's a very like desired feature <laughs> um, in modeling, which I didn't know. <laughs> and I spent years worrying it made me look masculine, but apparently it makes me look feminine. And... I thought maybe you want to know that too. <laughs> that said, all bodies are equally valid. So now we have tops, right? And by the way, you can do something as simple as women's long sleeve top. Long sleeve tops are adorable with skirts, especially these little like sweater kind of ones. Oh, it's a shame again. <laughs> Um, but the point is, <laughs> I really like, uh, oh, there's a semi-cropped, oh, I'm convinced it's the only website. <laughs> yeah, th at this point, do what you want. <laughs> so, um, the good thing with, like, tops that are, like, a bit cropped and long sleeve is you can kind of hide your arms and shoulders while also emphasizing like some aspects of the front of your body and emphasizing like a little bit of tummy um, can really give it a really feminine shape because not a lot of masculine styles will do like crop looks so if you're not like confident to do a full crop top you can try a long sleeve top that is cropped <laughs> sound cool? cool Let's see jackets. 
women's jackets. There can be all sorts of things, right? <laughs> all sorts of things. Um, so, the main one I know that you might want to know. There's denim jackets. It's kind of like jeans material. Usually you don't pair jeans with other, like, denim. But you can do what you want, honestly. I think this outfit's pretty cool. I like that. You can do all sorts of stuff. You can, like, have it buttoned up. You can have it unbuttoned. You can have the sleeves rolled up a little. Lots of options. It's a really flexible outfit. Flannels are very popular in the trans community. Um, usually because of their associations with sapphic culture. And here is kind of what they look like. You can get them a baggier. You can get them a bit tighter fit. It's up to you. When you see like, you know, the, the picture of like the, the flannel itself, it might not look as firm as you'd want it to be. But when paired with like high-waisted jeans or a cute skirt, it looks really cute. <laughs> now, if we want to be extra cool, a leather jacket. Leather jackets are very cool. That is very cool. <laughs> I got um, a, I got a crop leather jacket a few years ago, and I love it. <laughs> so, literally any clothing item, you can type crop, <laughs> and it'll just be a bit shorter. I think it's just a very cool look. <laughs> you can do all sorts of stuff. With denim jackets. You can even get them in different colors too. But the pink's actually so cute. Okay, I need to like resist the urge to go shopping after this video. Because if I do that, I won't have money. And uh, I, uh, I recently spent a lot. So I'm going to try to resist. I'm doing this for educational purposes. Okay. Um, you can search for women's coats too if you want something extra warm. And okay, that's that's actually adorable. I love these. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe it's not good for me to look at these because. It, it's spring right now. I can't even wear these. <laughs> um, I always love these kind of ones. The ones that like go really long down. And like. I feel like at a certain point. If I ever want to give that vibe. I, this one looks so cool. It's like a cloak. But like. Like also a coat. It's like a cloak coat. Why did why does this website have the cool stuff? This is just an advertisement. <laughs> By the way, the video is not actually sponsored. <laughs> and if that website asked me, I would probably say no. <laughs> but if H and M want to sponsor me, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> probably won't happen though. So, um, this last part is going to be about shoes and then I'll do bras at the end. So <laughs> shoes are really complicated because getting shoes in your size is always complicated for trans people. Um, that's very possible. Generally if you search like custom shoe sizes you can get something made. They're a bit expensive though. But um, Doc Martens boots. These are the secret. This is the secret knowledge that I am passing to you. Doc Martens are these cute ankle boots. They're referred to as ankle boots because it goes to the ankle. And it has like a, like a tiny heel, but not enough to actually change your height. You see, um, these are marketed as a unisex shoe. And because they're unisex, they have them in a lot of sizes. Sizes that for women like me, and maybe like you, uh, my feet are a bit big. So <laughs> these 
for a lifesaver back in high school. <laughs> they saved my butt. Oh my god. Um, I have two pairs because the first pair broke after like years of usage. <laughs> I wore it down until it was like shattered. <laughs> These last a very long time. Now, don't underestimate sneakers because sneakers are also <laughs> in unisex sizing a lot of the time and these can lead to a lot of flexibility. Converse or chucks as they're sometimes called, um, they're often in like all sorts of sizes. This one in particular is gendered in women's sizes and um, yeah, so it's a bit limited in this partic particular website, but my point still stands that if you can find like, these kind of ones are called Converse and Trucks, um, these are Canvas sneakers, the chunky sneakers are very popular, like, um, you'll see these a lot, um, the ones that are like a bit chunkier at the bottom, <laughs> I don't know if they actually give you more support. But they're trendy and you see a lot of girls wear them. <laughs> I don't own any, but I'd love to try them. Um, depends on how easy they are to dance in. Because <laughs> uh, that's a big deal for me with shoes. Um, now sneakers are very complicated because they have their own subculture and that kind of thing. And people dedicate their lives to sneakers. So if you want to know more about that, definitely. Uh, such videos about um, really big sneaker fans. <laughs> uh, the next type I want to show is high tops. So this is a catch-all term for anything that goes a little bit to the ankle. In my opinion these usually look pretty girly. Um, I, I really want those. <laughs> Maybe this video is a bad idea for my bank account. Um, Unrelated reasons, I am going to open another tab for later. Yep, that's me. I'm definitely not going to buy those. Anyway, education time. Um, so high tops is just a catch-all term for shoes that just go up to your ankles. I think they look really cute. Um, I mean, they're the type of sneaker that looks best with skirts, <laughs> at least compared to other types of sneakers. Um... I, I think I learnt the word high top from Wizards of Waverly Place. <laughs> I think the main character said it a couple of times and that's when I learnt. Because you, you have to be creative to learn like the names of these fashion products. So I hope this video means that other people don't have to figure it out in such innovative ways. Of course, like watching a sitcom that's not as popular but still is popular. How popular is this the Waverly Place now? I mean, it has a rewatch podcast, so it must be kind of popular still. Um, what matters is I really like it. Okay. So, here's the tricky subject. Bras. Am I allowed to show pictures of bras? I don't know. So I'm going to speak for this part. Because <laughs> I don't want YouTube to be a bully. So, basically, all you need to know about bras is if you don't want to wear the uncomfy, like, strapped ones, you can buy a sports bra. It's okay. And uh, here's a little trick. Sports bras are actually easier to stuff with socks to give the illusion of boobs. So if you're just starting out, it's very useful. For my stuffing back then, I used ski socks. <laughs> Don't ask how an Australian had ski socks on them. It was a school trip. <laughs> um, and I would fold the ski socks into like a little ball almost. But like still a bit square looking. And then I'd place it in the bra and then it would look like I had boobs. Um, one time in high school, I had a I had a drama play where I, I, I played as Little Red Riding Hood, I think. <laughs> Um, and I stuffed my bra for the role, and my class got a little suspicious how good I did it. So, 
just one of those moments. Anyway, <laughs> um, wait, did I play Little Red Riding Hood or Little Red Riding Hood's mom? I I don't remember. I think the story is cooler if I got the role of Red Riding Hood, but I, I think I played her mom. Oh well. <laughs> so, um, with bras, they're sized kind of strange. Um, so basically, there's a cup size, which is how big the boob pokes out. So, A cup is probably the smallest, uh, B is a bit bigger, C is pretty big. D, so on, so on, so on. Trans women usually can get to like A, B, and maybe C. Some go beyond, of course. Um, so I have a B cup, for example, and I would pick a bra that's sizing is listed as B. <laughs> um, but then you have a number next to the letter. So it'd be like B16 or something. The 16 is just how far the band that goes around the bra is stretched. So, because our shoulders, chances are a little bigger, we usually need a bit of a bigger bra band size, so usually the number will be a bit higher. However, bras are pretty flexible, especially with sports bras. <laughs> so, they're not too hard to get the hang of. So, that is my half an hour crash course on how to search for clothes on the internet. I hope it was useful. I don't know how much of this is considered um, knowledge everyone has or knowledge that's so simple that no one talks about it so it's hard to know where to start. This does not include everything but I hope it helps you find some stuff. My main tip is just to find clothes you think is cool. You don't have to think about styles yet. And it's okay if your style changes too. <laughs> I used to dress in like punky skirts uh, with chains on them. Whereas now I, I dress kind of like preppy femme, I guess. <laughs> like flowy tops and skirts. <laughs> a much more soft look. <laughs> so give stuff a go. And I believe in you. And if no one's said it recently, I want to let you know that I am proud of you. Okay? I know shopping for clothes that society has decided you can't use can be very daunting and inherently rebellious. But, you know, the clothes are just out there. So, what I did is I used to hide my clothes in like a little bag that I hid in my closet. Funny closet haha <laughs> that it was a very useful tactic for me if you have any friends that are really supportive of you and your house environment is not you can always get a friend to be the one that receives the package then they give it to you there's all sorts of approaches also check in of any supportive friends to see if they have any clothes they're not using you'd be surprised what you find <laughs> That concludes our clothing crash course. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I had quite a bit of fun uh, filming it. <laughs> I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, or afternoon. And if you're listening to this audio while sleeping, I hope you have a lovely sleep. So, this is where I close out. Stay hydrated and know that you're valid. If you enjoy what you saw, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification because that's what the YouTubers say. But don't hit it too loud because you might wake up the people sleeping. But, but, but still hit it. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Have a great day. And if you have any clothes that you think look cool, you can show me in the comments because clothes are pretty cool. <laughs>